Welcome back to the tool crib. This video is part two of the knots that I use the most. And we're going to start today with one of my favorites. This is the Kalmic loop. So this is a slipped fixed loop knot. Now this is a member of the Bolin family. It's actually the slip version of the Eskimo Bolin. So it doesn't form quite the same way, but the benefit to this one is that it provides a a slip so that you can very easily untie it. Now this is not a knot that I would use in a safety application, but I do use this a lot for anchoring down loads. So tying into rings or, or rails, uh, a lot of times I'll use this when I want a quick release on my anchor point for my load. So this one is a little easier to tie. I've tied this one in diamond braid, which is a little bit more pliable. Uh, the the thing that you got to be careful with with this knot is it has to be dressed up properly because if it's not dressed up properly then it becomes uh, it, it can tumble apart on you but once dressed properly it is incredibly stable knot and a very good knot to use so i'm going to tie this one in paramax to kind of show you so the first thing you want to do is uh, this is one of the few knots that i go under the rail to start the knot so we'll go under and in my right hand i'm going to grab that tail end i'm going to leave about a foot or so of tail end out the side here now with uh, my other hand i'm going to make one complete wrap around my hand with the standing end of the rope now from this point i'm just going to shift my hand over and what i want to do is inside of this main loop i'm going to dip my hand down and then I can be able to reach through, grab the tail end, and all I have to do is pull a bite of the tail end through. And now from this point, all we have to do is tighten it up. Now you can see with this one, it, how it doesn't quite uh, form the same way. So what you have to be careful to do here is this line has to be pulling down on what, on my case now, is the right-hand side of my main loop. Once it is, then it will seat up properly, and that's how it dresses properly. So, like I said, in in a more pliable line, this one dresses up a lot better. When you're in a little stiffer line like this Paramax, you have to make sure that uh, you get it to dress properly, because if it's not, then, again, it can tumble apart on you. But this is a very, very good fixed loop knot. It's the Calmic loop. This next knot is one of the more common knots uh, that you'll find. This is kind of one of your more basic knots, but the, the value to this one is that it's found in a lot of other different knots, and so that's the reason why I teach it. I actually debated about whether to put this in here, uh, but it is useful because you'll find it in so many other different knots. This is the clove hitch. The reason I don't like to necessarily teach this one by itself is because I don't really trust the clove hitch. You can see that with just some movement on this knot, it tends to break apart or come apart. So by itself, it's not the greatest of knots to use, but you'll find it in other knots uh, a lot, and there's ways to secure this one. So let me show you how to tie it, and I'll show you how to secure it a little bit better. So to start this, you go around your rail, and we're going to go off to the right-hand side. Then when we come around, we're going to make a cross across that uh, first wrap. And we'll come out the left-hand side now. Now all we have to do is lift the second wrap there, and we're going to run the working end in parallel, but going in the opposite direction of the way it came out. And then all you have to do is tighten it up, and it's pretty easy to tie this one up and quick to tie. This is the clove hitch. Now, to make this a little bit more secure, you want to leave it a little longer tail. And the best way to, that I've ever found to secure this one is by going around and just putting another half hitch in. And before you noticed how it started to tumble apart, with, with that second uh, wrap in here, or that last wrap, that extra half hitch, it tends to lock in a little bit better. So if you're going to tie it to a rail and you're going to trust this knot, then I would definitely put an extra half hitch or maybe even a couple in order to secure it a little better. You can do a half hitch around the standing end, but I've always found that it works better by putting a half hitch around the rail instead. The next knot is the sheet bend, and the sheet bend is one of the more popular bend knots, and uh, it's a very effective bend knot as well. Now, normally you'll tie this one in the double version, which I have here, but I'm going to show you several different uh, versions of this knot. So you have the sheet bend, the slip sheet bend, the double sheet bend, and the triple sheet bend. So in order to tie this one, uh, and the big, great benefit to this one, before I go on, is the fact that, as in the case of this knot right here, or how I have this one tied, is that it can effectively tie larger rope to smaller rope, or smaller rope to larger rope, however you want to look at it. But when you are doing that, you want to make sure that the larger line is the one that puts the bite in it, and the smaller line is the one that does the wrapping. So, let's take this part. 
And again, we're going to form a bite in our larger line. And then with our smaller line, we're going to go up through that bite. And then we're going to wrap around. And then as it comes back around, we're just going to lift where it came through the first time. And we're just going to tuck that line in. And now we can pull them apart and dress this knot out a little bit. And that is the sheet bin. So this is the single. Now, in order to make the slip sheet bin, all you have to do is just get yourself a little extra line. And instead of sending the end of the line through, we'll just send a bite through instead. And then we'll tighten that up. And this is a little bit better even still than the single sheet bin. And this provides a slip so you can very easily untie it. Now, normally this knot is tied with the double. And in order to do the double, we'll just start out like we did the sheet bin first. And we'll just add a, another wrap. And this is how I generally will tie this knot and just make sure it gets dressed out right. And that's the double sheet bin. And obviously for the triple sheet bin, we'll just loosen this up. You'll make one additional wrap. And this is the triple sheet bin, which is even more secure than the double. Though most of the times a double will, will suffice. It just depends on what you're using or, or how hard you're pulling on these lines. So the sheet bin, the slip sheet bin, double and a triple. Now this next knot is also a very common or essential knot, if you will. Uh, this is the overhand. I'm gonna show you the overhand, the double, and the triple. Now the reason this one is important, first of all, uh, it is basis for a lot of other knots that we'll look at later in this series. But the overhand by itself can make a pretty decent little stopper knot as well as the double and the triple. So in order to form this, the overhand knot is really, really simple. You just create a loop, Take your working end around and come back in through the loop, pull them apart, and that is the overhand. Now, if you want to do the double, you'll start off by going around and just make an additional wrap here. And as those loops lay in there, then you just bring this back up through those two loops now, pull them apart, and that's the double. And then if you want to do the triple, pretty easy. You just make an additional wrap. So there's our first wrap, our second wrap, and now our third, we'll send it through. And now we have three lines. So you can tie this in and it, and uh, this makes an even better stopper knot. Now the double and the triple is, is really what we'll be using later in different knots to form more complex knots. So this is a very good knot to learn and one of the essentials. The, the overhand knot, double overhand, and triple overhand. The water bowling is a form of the, of the bowling knot, and the, what it was originally used for is when you had to tie on a fixed loop knot that was going to be pulled through water with original rope or, or more uh, natural fiber rope, the rope would tend to swell up. And so even with a bowling in there, it was if it got wet or if it got saturated, it was a little hard to get it undone. And so they came up with the water bowling, which essentially takes uh, adds another half hitch around here so that this half hitch or this nipping loop that it forms is taking up half the stress of the rope or the knot, and the original nipping loop is taking up the other half. So it just uh, allows it not to get quite as tight as what you would find with the original bowling. So let me pull this one apart and I'll show you how this one is done. So to do this, we're gonna turn our first nipping loop. Now with this, you wanna leave a little extra line than you would with a standard bowling. So I've gone down about two feet, maybe just a touch more. So we'll turn our first one by just grabbing it, twisting to the left to form our first nipping loop. Now we wanna form a second nipping loop by doing the same motion, only this time we want that second nipping loop to pass underneath of the first. Now we can finish this out like a regular bowling. You come up through, you go around your standing end, and then you go back down, pinch it onto itself. Now from here, we can start to pull it apart, and then you'll see that this forms that second nipping loop which is a pretty good knot by itself because it traps uh the other benefit to this is it double traps the working end of the knot and so thereby makes it more secure than what you're going to find with other types of bowling so this is the water bowling this next knot is an arborist knot this one's called the quick hitch and what it's designed to do is to be able to allow to be able to pull up a second rope and very easily pull it up so imagine an arborist has his main line up in a tree and sometimes arborists can get into some pretty 
uh, precarious uh, positions up up inside of, or you know up on top of a tree. And so if they don't want to really have a knot here that they're going to have to fiddle with. So imagine they're pulling up the weight of this rope, then they're pulling up the weight of this rope, and then they have to hold that weight while fiddling around trying to undo this line. So what you want is for a quick release knot like this one, the quick hitch, so that once they just pull this line up, then they can just grab it and the whole thing tumbles out and it very easily can uh, release that knot. So in order to do this one, on your main line, what you want to do is create a bite. Now with your the line that you're going to be pulling up, you go over the top of it, you come on to the inside here, and then you just put a bite through the bite of the main line and then pull it apart and that creates the quick hitch so i'm going to dress this out a little bit better than that and now you can very easily pull this line up so this is only used to tie up other ropes so to send another rope up to an elevation so if somebody has a rope already set but needs another one this is the hitch that would you would use and then they can very easily untie it the next knot that we're going to look at is a stopper knot and this one is called the oysterman stopper knot it's also been referred to as the Ashley Stopper Knot. Now, Clifford Ashley put together one of the best knot tying books ever produced. Uh, it's a little outdated now because there have been so many other knots that have been discovered since the time that he had that one in print. But it's a very good reference for learning a lot of different knots. And if you're interested in that, I'll have a, uh, a, a link to that book in the description box below. So the Oysterman Stopper. Uh, what makes it identifiable is the, th the three lobes that it produces. Now, what that benefits you in is that the three lobes actually keep that knot flat, that stopper knot flat against whatever you might be pulling against. So if you have uh, any number of things, if you have a washer or something that you're stopping up against, uh, just a variety of different uh, uh, scenarios where this comes in handy. So this, th those three lobes keep that knot pretty well flat instead of some other stopper knots which can tend to twist to one side or the other and so this is one of the reasons why this is one of the best stopper knots so let me pull this one apart real quick and you'll see how very easy this is to tie so the first thing we're going to do is to start off with a uh with a slip knot so we'll turn a loop in our line roll that over your uh your standing end then we're going to pull a small bite of the standing end through and then we're just going to tighten that up a little bit now with your trailing end you kind of see how your trailing end wants to uh, roll in this in one direction here and all you want to do is just the way it naturally wants to fall you just bring it up through your loop here and then you can tighten it down and just dress this knot out and that gives you your uh, those three lobes uh, which keep that knot flat so a very bulky stopper knot uh, and a very good and easy to tie stopper knot. This is the Oysterman stopper. The next knot that we're going to be looking at is called the remote release. Now I want to give you a warning here that this is not a knot that you want to be underneath of whenever you're using it. So what this knot is intended to do, so if you're working in, at an elevation, say you're on a rooftop or something, and you're working by yourself, you have a bunch of tools at the end of the day you need to lower down, this allows you to untie the knot remotely so the problem with this one is if it gets bumped in the wrong way then whatever is tied onto it uh, it could actually tumble apart on you and thereby cause injury to whoever might be underneath of that load so never get underneath this of uh, uh, the load when this knot is tied this is strictly to be used when you're by yourself so what this consists of is a stopper knot and a half hitch. And imagine we're tied onto a toolbox here, a bucket, anything that you might be lowering down to the ground. Now, once that gets to the ground, then you can just, it'll tumble free on you. And that's the beauty of this knot is that it, you can, as the name implies, remote release it. So let me show you how this one is tied. Now to start this one off, we're gonna use a, uh, a smaller stopper knot. I like to use the figure eight with this one. So we'll go around and we'll create our figure eight stopper. Now I like to dress this out a little bit different. So I'll pull the top portion of that figure eight down and probably didn't leave quite enough tail with this one. But what I want to create is kind of a more of a button stopper there. Now we'll go around whatever we're tying onto here and then we'll create a half hitch. So now with our half hitch, we want to take our stopper knot and we want to go through the loop of that half hitch and now when you pull everything down you can see that the with pressure 
uh, this knot will hold in place. It creates a fixed loop that will hold while it's in tension, but as soon as you release the tension, it can tumble apart on you, and that's exactly what you want it for. Now, let me show you how this would work uh, in real life. The Alpine Butterfly is a fixed loop knot that is tied on a bite in a line. And what's great about the, the Alpine Butterfly is, first of all, it can be pulled from any direction it doesn't, it doesn't give. So if you're just pulling off two lines, say off the loop, or if you're just pulling off the two ends, that loop stays intact. So this is beneficial for a couple of different reasons. So let's say, as an example, you have a bad spot in your rope. You can tie on the Alpine Butterfly and just make sure that the center of your loop is where your fray is, and that will isolate that fray and thereby uh, allow what is a dangerous rope with a fray in it to be able to uh, use it very securely. And then obviously, other reasons for this is if you have like a ridge line or something and you have uh, stuff hanging off that ridge line that you need to clip in, then you can use loops like this in order to accomplish that. It's also good in things like the trucker's hitch. Uh, Another benefit to this knot is that because, like some other knots that we've looked at, it has these bridges, this one comes apart very easily. So even after it's been loaded up pretty substantially, you can still very easily get it untied. So to tie this one, what we want to do is we want to take uh, anywhere on our line here, we're going to wrap it around our hand. So we're going to do one complete wrap around, and then we want these lines here to cross like this. Now we're going to take this loop and we're going to pull it down underneath of that X, and then we're going to send it right back up through where those other two loops were. And then we could just pull it all apart and get this knot dressed out. Now, I made that loop just a little bit small there, uh, but that's the quickest method that I know in order to tie the Alpine Butterfly. Now, let me show you a couple other ways that you can tie this knot as well. So the next way you can tie this knot is by doing three wraps or creating, uh, it's actually two wraps, but it creates three drops or three lays around your hand. Now, once it's set here, what we do, we have three lays, uh, left, right, or left, center, and right. So you want to take the middle wrap, and we're going to go underneath of the third wrap. And then from here, we can kind of pull a little extra to adjust the size of our loop. Now we'll take this one over, and we'll go past back underneath both of those wraps. And then you can pull it all apart, dress it out, and that is the Alpine Butterfly again. And then the last method uh, is kind of, uh, this more of a tabletop method, I guess. So what you'll do is you'll have your line and you want to create, a, do a double uh, twist here in order to create a figure eight. Now, let me spread that out a little bit. Now with that figure eight set, you kind of want to hold down on this, uh, on the X here. And we're going to roll this over so that it comes to the bottom. Now we're just going to take the top of what used to be our figure eight, and we're just going to go underneath the cross here and bring it right back up through here. And when we pull that up and tie it up, that is also the Alpine Butterfly. So three ways to tie the Alpine Butterfly, though I prefer the first method. The last knot that we're going to be looking at is called the axle hitch. Now it was so named because originally it was designed to grab onto two sides of an axle in order to pull from a center pull point or are off a single line. But there's a lot of different uses for this knot. So say you're pulling something up, uh, you're working at an elevation, you you have a, an item that you have two rig points to, you can use this knot in order to tie off to those rig points to have a center line. Another application, you can tie on to two uh, tow hooks of a vehicle uh, in, and then be able to center it up and pull off the very middle. Now, one thing with this knot is you want to keep the two loops here at a more acute angle. If you have it widened out like this, then it takes away from the strength of the rope. Now, we're going to be finishing this knot out with uh, the first knot that we learned in this series, which is the Kalmic loop. This is a good example of where learning some knots will help you to form combinations of uh, more complicated knots like the axle hitch. So let me pull this one apart real quick, and we will get this one tied up. Okay, so we've gone around our object here, or our two rig points on either side. Working end is on my left. Now I'm going to take the center line here, and we're going to pull it up, uh, even with these others, in order to form two loops here. Now with our working end, we're going to make two wraps around those two lines in order to keep those two loops stable. 
And I'm gonna shorten this up just so I get it in the view of the camera a little better. So let me shorten this back a little bit. And again, two wraps around here. And now we can finish this off with the Calmic loop. So now our working end is on our right hand side, our standing end is on our left. So just like we did in the first example, we'll grab our working end, we'll go one wrap around our hand with the standing end, we'll twist over, we'll dip down, and then we will grab a bite of the working end and send it through. And now all we have to do is pull it apart and that creates the Kalmic loop there. So now we have a very stable, uh, let's see if I can position that right. We have a very stable knot here where the loops won't close down on you and you're pulling off of a, a, a center point for this knot. And with the quick release of the Kalmic loop, after you're done with this knot, you can just pull it apart and the whole thing will come undone. And that is the axle hitch.